What's good, Laker Nation? It's your boy, Big Baby Jonathan. Got an announcement to make. I'm gonna change this channel from Laker Talk with Big Baby Jonathan to Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast Show. Welcome to the show. In today's show, I'm gonna be talking about the Lakers lost once again, 115 to 101. Lakers are now 31 and 40. Um, the season's a wrap officially in my book. I know there is still puncher's chance of us making the playoffs. In my opinion, it's just the same thing every game. KCP had 23 points in the first half. Career high. Ended the game with 35, which that didn't get the job done. But I liked how everybody can play offensively. I know we weren't there offensively in the first half, but second half we were making shots. Crucial diving for loose balls. Rondo was competing at a high level. Um, I just didn't like how we let Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton do what they want to on us. Brooke Lopez had 28 points. Unacceptable. Shout out to people watching on Instagram Live. Appreciate you guys. And I uh, just didn't like how we came out and let Brooke Lopez shoot threes, get our rebounds, put backs. Brooke Lopez did whatever he wanted us to in the paint. And second chance points for us, 12. For them, they had 20 second chance points. That's unacceptable. And plus, what sucks is no LeBron tonight. He didn't play. Kumpo didn't play. So it's just one of those games where um, Milwaukee just took it to us. Pit it, they just took it to us tonight. It's just that simple. And um, also, I want to dive into... I'm done talking about the Laker game. I want to dive into... Is this season a failed season for the Lakers? Of course it is. You know what I mean? That was a question I had for you guys for the YouTube channel. Is this season a failure? Of course it is. Because we had... I had high expectations for this team. Western Conference Finals. Getting past Golden State. Getting past Oklahoma City and all them. It's a failed season because we're not, we're not producing these this season. We're not producing these, so it's a failed season. You have to have a championship mindset coming in each and every season. When the Lakers had Kobe Bryant, Smush Parker, Kwame Brown, Lamar Odom, Chris Mim, the Lakers had high expectations championship contained team. Because if you want to have that high expectations, you can't just, oh, I want to make the playoffs and have a good season, have a good offseason. No. If you want to win and produce championships, you have to have the mindset to produce championships. You got to compete at a high level each and every night. And I think this team will do that next season because Magic Johnson is not playing around. Rob Palinka is not playing around. And I don't care what that rumor. Rob Palinka is looking for Magic Johnson rather. That's fake news. And I trust Jeannie Buss. Jeannie Buss, appreciate you for everything you do for the Lakers organization, including me. Biggest Laker fan you'll ever meet. And, uh, yeah, and um, it's just a failed season because the injuries had to do some part of it, but we had to capitalize on our opportunity when we were the number four seed, the three seed. We were twenty, and we were twenty and fifteen when LeBron got hurt on Christmas. We were twenty and fifteen. If that injury did not happen, I can rest assure you, I can guarantee you, we'd be a top three seed in the Western Conference because because what we did. Without LeBron, was six and twelve, unacceptable, very unacceptable. And the Lakers are five and eighteen without Lonzo. So Lonzo was missing, Kuzma was missing, and all these players were missing that we needed tonight and so forth down the stretch. And shout out to Brandon Ingram, speedy recovery, bro. He just had successful surgery on his blood clot getting taken out. That was no joke, y'all. Blood clots are no joke, man. But anyway, um, I want to also dive into. Some NBA talk, and I'm talking about Lakers, but NBA talk. This is kind of in there. Who would you build in your prime? LeBron James or Kobe Bryant? I would take Kobe Bean Bryant, and let me tell you why. The reason I would take Kobe in my in his prime over LeBron to build a team around, because Kobe has a never-give-up attitude, a hustle, grit, grind. I love his passion for the game. I love how he can score on you if you're talking mess. He doesn't just <laughs> laugh and high-five people and doesn't post stuff on Instagram if you're getting blown up by 30 and when you pass somebody in milestones, you get excited. No. Actually, speaking of Kobe, a fan, or actually a reporter asked him, how do you think, are you are you excited that LeBron passed you an all-time scoring list? He's like, yeah, that's cool and all, but you have to produce championships. You have to produce championships in LA. And I have to agree with him. Because you can't just pass people, pass people, and expect to get, like, oh, high five. No, if you want to win in L.A., you have to produce championships. It's just that simple. But I would take Kobe in his prime over LeBron because 
I just like his game overall. In my opinion, Kobe's a scorer. He's a hustler. He's a great ground type player. He will shoot in your face if you're talking mess. Just ask Ruben Patterson, Patrick Beverly, the runner test, the Ray Allen. Everybody that tried to defend Kobe didn't because they scored, Kobe Bryant scored a 50 piece. That's what I like about Kobe. If Kobe Bryant would have heard that, what Patrick Beverly said, I want LeBron. And if that was in, flipped around, if someone says, if Patrick Beverly says, I want Le Kobe Bryant, I want him. Kobe be like, okay, take this 50 piece and you'll ail and get out of LA. So that's how dominant Kobe is. He's this, just that. It's a nasty, great grind, and he's the closest thing to Michael Jordan. I don't care what anybody says. There's a video on YouTube of comparison Kobe and Le Kobe and Michael Jordan. They had a similar jump shot, similar attitude, the way they walk, the way they talk, just all the stuff that they do reminds me of Michael Jordan somewhat back and forth. So I really like Kobe, but I would take Kobe my part in his prime over LeBron. But also, I want to dive into some more NBA. Topics. I know this is a Laker channel, but I want to throw in some more NBA topics like who would I build my, who would I would take in their prime, Tim Duncan or Kevin Garnett or Allen Iverson. That's a tough one, but I have to go with Tim Duncan. If Tim Duncan is a one of the best power forwards of all time. He has that Kawhi Leonard attitude in terms of he doesn't talk mess. He doesn't talk. He doesn't talk to the media like Kawhi. He just doesn't walk in the he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't flashy with his fashion. He would wear a polo, jeans, shoes, and a backpack, and that's it. He didn't have this swag. He didn't have, his swag was on the court. When you talk mess to him, he'll drop 30 and 20, or 30 and 12 rebounds on your three blocks, and you lose. So, there was a game that I watched when Tim Duncan showed me he had that dog in him. Against the Sacramento Kings, DeMarcus Cousin was just yapping, yapping at Tim Duncan all game. Talking mess. Tim Duncan scored Five straight possession, the same exact move every time on DeMarcus Cousins. I like Tim Duncan, but I would pick him over Kevin Garnett and Allen Iverson. Those two players are great, talented players, but I'd rather have my team around around Tim Duncan. I'd build around him. He's a great, one of the greatest power forwards of all time. That's who I would choose. But also, I'm going to give you my top five point guards in the NBA. Number one, number one, number one Stephen Curry. He's one of the best shooters of all time, in my opinion. He can dribble on you, step back three in your face. Number two, Kyrie Irving. He has a, one of the best handles in the game. Number three, Dame Dalla. I'll take Damian Lillard. That's my top three. It's my top three point guard right there. Number four, Russell Westbrook, because he has a hustle, great grind. Love his competitive nature, man. As Max Kellerman said he will never win a championship because he tries too hard. Too, too much. Okay? That means he wants it more. More than anybody. But for my number five point guard, Chris Paul. Gotta take Chris Paul for my top five. Or my number five point guard in, in the NBA right now. So, I know this is not the little usual Laker talk for you guys. But since it's the summertime, since the Lakers are not making the playoffs... I'm going to start doing some more NBA topics and old school type of talk, so get prepared for that. And I know I made my announcement in the beginning of the show, but I'm going to change my name from Laker Talk with Big Baby Jonathan to the Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast Show. So I'm going to end this Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast Show. Follow me on Instagram, Big Baby Jonathan. I'll leave my Twitter link in the description down below. And if you have comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And follow me on Twitter, Big Baby Jonathan, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, appreciate you subscribing. Turn on those post notifications. And welcome to Laker Talk slash Big Baby Jonathan Sports Podcast Show. Until then, Laker Nation, until every until until every NBA fan out there, appreciate you guys tuning in. Until next time, peace out. Have a safe one. And always remember, Magic Johnson is magical.